think of the biggest secret of the past century, the biggest lie. This is bigger. My name is Justin Noble. I'm a science journalist. I write about issues of science and the environment for US magazines and investigative sites. And for the past two years, I've been researching the issue of oil and gas radioactivity. And so one of the first revelations is that oil and gas production brings with it to the surface an incredible amount of radioactivity. Much of it comes in the form of a toxic, salty liquid that the industry refers to as brine. Brine is something that collects at a wellhead in tanks and human beings, truck drivers, must pull up to a wellhead and pick the brine up and take it to a site for disposal. These drivers are completely unaware that they are handling a hazardous substance. They're told they're hauling water or salt water, when in actuality, they're hauling something that well should be labeled as radioactive. And we can look at numbers. In the US, we often measure radioactivity with a unit called picocuries per liter. Environmental Protection Agency is our agency to look after our health, and they have a limit a safe drinking water limit for radium, which is this very hazardous radioactive element in this brine that these truckers are picking up. Their limit is five. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has an industrial discharge limit, and there's two different isotopes of radium. Their limit is 60 for each isotope. And the brine that these truckers are hauling, radium can be as high as 28,500. These levels are extraordinary. I think one of the most alarming and, and terrible discoveries in my research is to discover that there was a set of Louisiana legal cases in 2016 in which oil and gas workers working a variety of common industry jobs developed lymphomas, leukemias, colon cancer, liver cancer, and other types of cancers. Many of them died and their exposures were linked using an analysis program created by the CDC, part of the US government, their exposures were linked indisputably to the radioactivity exposure they received on the job. We only know about these cases because in Louisiana, they were brought in front of a court of law. There is no way that this is not happening in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world. This is a monumental disaster. It's a public health catastrophe happening in real time.
fracking makes the situation so much worse. Not only do we have brine, but we also have drill cuttings. With fracking, we are often drilling into a black shale. Black shales are geologic formations that have a known high radioactive signature. In the United States, the U.S. Geological Survey actually looked at black shales in the 1960s for possible uranium mining. There's so much uranium in black shales that it was considered a potential source to make nuclear bombs. So all of the drill cuttings, all of the material that comes out of that hole will have a radioactive signature and those signatures can potentially be very high. That material, those drill cuttings are going to be piled up in a landfill that was intended for household garbage. Some of these landfills have actually become the biggest geographic feature in their area. They are literally mountains, and the locals who live next to them refer to them as mountains. And the leachate, which is the gunky water that connects at the bottom of the landfill, can have, and we have found to have, a radioactive signature. This radioactive leachate stream will often be processed by a sewage treatment plant that has absolutely no ability to clean out radioactivity. These sewage treatment plants then discharge into creeks and rivers that communities recreate in, that communities drink from. If the industry had to pay full price for that waste, if they had to appropriately dispose of the waste, if it had to go in trucks that actually were placarded as hazardous or radioactive, driven by drivers who actually knew what they were hauling, were trained to haul that material, it had to end up in landfills that were appropriately designed to carry radioactive toxic waste. If the industry had to do all of that, their costs would be extraordinary. They're in completely there would be a complete crumbling of the cost calculus. And we know what the times are right now. That, that would sink most oil and gas companies. Renewables would take over the next day. It's over. It's all over. Right now you have oil and gas workers in the United States who are reaching out because they have seen the work that we have done on this issue, published in Rolling Stone, published in Public Herald and other outlets, and they are realizing that they are doing a job that has put them in front of extraordinarily dangerous circumstances. They realize that they're not just contaminating themselves, they're potentially contaminating their families as well. So this isn't just a problem in the United States. There's a worker I'm in touch with who lives in the UK and he worked in oil fields all around the world. One of his children developed leukemia and died at a very young age. And there is scientific research to link the exposure of a father to childhood leukemia. This type of research has in many cases been there for years, but it has not broach the surface of our consciousness, and it needs to. The medical community needs to wake up to this.